Mesdames, Messieurs, bonjour et bienvenue. My name is Jean Boxler, and on behalf of Definity Team today, we welcome you and we're very excited to introduce you and demonstrate the Internet computer. It's a very, very important step for us, and uh, I hope you're going to enjoy. Dominique William is our chief scientist <laughs> and founder, and we're very, very proud. So um, enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks again for coming. Um, this is a short intro from me. Um, the Definity Foundation, uh, based in Zurich, Switzerland, uh, is developing uh, internet technology uh, from three research centers, one in Zurich, one in Palo Alto, one in San Francisco. We also have teams in Germany and uh, Tokyo. And the internet computer is a public resource that will make it possible to build websites, enterprise IT systems, and internet services directly on the internet itself. So I've only got one slide, which you may be pleased to know. And uh, this will allow me to recap um, what we're building. So uh, the internet, we often forget, is created by a public protocol that combines thousands of private networks around the world to create a single public network. So when you're, for example, communicating with somebody over WhatsApp, your data is probably you know, flowing over um, maybe a corporate network, wireless carriers network, uh, ISPs network, transit providers network, and so on. All these networks are independent, but they're combined into a single public network by this protocol called IP. We're developing a protocol called ICP that combines compute capacity in independent data centers to create a public uh, compute platform called the Internet Computer. So this extends the functionality of the Internet from connectivity uh, to compute to enable the Internet to actually run software systems. So you can build your website, enterprise IT system, or Internet service directly on the Internet. Um, very briefly, it, it provides four key advantages. First of all, it provides people a way to avoid being a captive customer of today's um, stack, which currently costs the world, according to Gartner, $3.9 trillion a year, which is an awful lot. Especially considering um, it's very difficult to use this stack to create secure systems. And so we're seeing this sort of rolling uh, meltdown in security with more and more data being stolen and, and more and more systems being brought low. So for example, as we speak, TravelX in London has been offline for several weeks because hackers have installed ransomware on its machines and encrypted all its systems. So the internet computer provides a tamper-proof environment where you can build systems that start off secure, i.e. that are secure by default. And uh, obviously, there are a lot of uh, organizations around the world that would love to build on a secure platform. And in the future, they'll be able to build on the internet computer. Thirdly, um, it reduces complexity. So we've sort of reimagined software and provide means, provided means to reduce the complexity of systems. So um, that obviously reduces costs and reduces time to market. And lastly, the internet computer provides a way to build a new kind of internet service that we call an open internet service that runs as part of the fabric of the internet itself uh, that will provide far greater transparency about how user data is processed. People will be able to see how these things run, be aware of updates, won't be possible for uh, an open Facebook, let's say, to ship off everyone's data to Cambridge Analytica without anybody knowing. And more subtly, but very importantly, uh, open internet services provide a way to create permanent APIs so that uh, other services can share the user data relationships, build on top of them, and create a sort of more dynamic, collaborative uh, internet ecosystem that brings some of the advantages uh, we saw in the 1990s. So with open internet services in mind, I'm going to hand over to Stanley Jones who's uh, going to provide a demonstration of something we've built on an internet computer and incubation. Stanley. Let 
And me? All right. So before, am I, am I on? Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, before we get started, are there any astrophysicists in the audience? Anybody? Okay. Good. <laughs> uh, might need to fact check me on some of this a little bit later. Um, yeah, so Definity is reinventing the legacy IT stack with something simpler, faster, more secure. Who believes that? Who believes me? Okay, some people, some people. Uh, that's amazing, that's amazing. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't. Um, I'm actually not sure if I really believed when I started at Definity that we were gonna replace the entire legacy IT stack. Uh, that was last decade, though, that I joined. You know, so many things have changed. That was like back then, you know, like Australia was on fire. Everyone was talking about Baby Yoda. It was a totally different world. It's 2020 now. Right, so today um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that that pretty big claim and I'm I'm gonna walk you through it. So I'm gonna show you uh, how easy it is to author an application um, that leverages the superpowers of the internet computer. I'm going to show you how to deploy that app um, to our brand new bronze uh, network that 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 we launched um, that that is running the internet computer, and I'll show you the front end of that application running in production. And I'll, sh I'll also show you at each step basically how the internet computer makes each of those steps simpler, faster, and more secure. So um, actually, yeah, so let's write an app. Let's, wh while we're at it, let's write two. Um, we made two apps. Uh, the first one is called Linked Up, kind of cheeky. Uh, as you might imagine, it's for resume management. Um, uh, the second was connected, which is missing a vowel, as you do, I guess. Um, and it is for social graph. So uh, you could imagine connected as a open internet service, uh, as Dominic brought up, then and build other things on top of the social, same social graph, like an address book, an event system, something like that. But for now, let's just leave it at two. The end user talks to linked up, which talks to connected, um, and. Yeah, let's look at the code. So a couple things to notice here. Um, first, this is written in Motoko, which is a language that we launched last fall. Um, more information on that at sdk.definity.org for full documentation. You don't have to write canisters in Motoko. I do. I like it. I, I think it's a, a really powerful, safe, and still familiar language. Um, Couple things to note here. One is uh, the database that we're using. So uh, Dominic mentioned that canisters are self-contained. So the database we we're using, actually we're not. Uh, we, there's no database. We just declare a data structure, in this case a hash map, move on with our life. Uh, the internet computer persists our data through a series of checkpoints, message replay. Um, we don't need MySQL, Redis, Mongo. Um, so there's no data, you don't need a database. Uh, the other thing is s talking uh, between these canisters. So what does that look like? Well, I actually just uh, import here, and now I can make any calls. So I'm importing the graph app, uh, and now I can just call its methods directly as if it were a local object, anything that is exposed by the other canister here, public. Um, I can call it directly. There's no... I don't have to set up a REST API, open endpoints, that sort of thing, so that all goes away. Um, and that's even true for the front end. So here's the, here's the JavaScript. Again, import. I import the profile, and then I can just call its methods directly, even sending in the arguments that it expects. Very simple. Again, like no API. So don't really need APIs. So what's that? Database, API, what else? Um, yeah, okay, let's get rid of those two. Um, deploying, uh, yeah, it, I really wish I could just take my app and just deploy it, right? But the modern best practices for deploying an application are kind of insane. I don't know, I mean, I've deployed a bunch and you, you wanna scale, right? So you need scale, so you actually deploy multiple copies, um, but then you need a load balancer, right? Um, because these multiple copies are stateless, then you actually have to add a database, maybe a cache around that. Um, now you've got data, right? So you want to protect it, so you put a firewall around that. 
Um, and that's only good for one region, so you need multi-region, and then probably a CDN around the whole thing, right? It starts to, this constellation of, of services starts to look a little bit like orbits, right? Solar system. Um, this is where the astrophysics part comes in. Uh, and I, I wish that I were exaggerating, but this is an actual architecture diagram. I had to remove things for clarity to like, just to make the point about how co co complicated it is, right? So this is, this is even more complicated than my straw man. Um, so let's, let's take a look at deploying to the internet computer. Oop, yep, we'll get back to that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly build. So I'm compiling that code that you just saw. And I will deploy it. I'm going to deploy it to one node running the internet computer. Pretty fast, three seconds. That's a lot faster. Uh, and let's go ahead and make sure that it happened. So I've set up these health check uh, methods that maybe you saw. And it's just gonna return true if it's running. It is, great. So now I'm gonna hit another node in the same network. I did not deploy to that node, I deployed to the first node, but it's there too. So the, 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 the peer-to-peer -peer, um, algorithm we use takes the code that I've sent to one node, spreads it to all the other nodes in the network. So I don't really need a load balancer. Um, also, as you can see, any node in that network uh, accepts that request. Um, these nodes are all over the world, right? So there's always gonna be one close to your users. So I don't need a CDN. We've already showed that we don't need a database. So all of these layers are starting to like fall away one by one. Um, oop, we'll come back to that. So yeah, databases, uh, load balancers, firewalls, CDN. Uh, the, th as for firewalls, as Dominic mentioned, the, the protocol is guaranteeing that the code that I deployed is what's actually being run on the nodes. It's, it's tamper-proof. Um, so a hacker can't make two plus two equal five, for instance. Um, so let's, yeah, let's look at the front end now. Um, you saw it go by. This is linked up. This is, uh, yeah, I'll let, I'll let it say the different things here, the different words. I'm gonna go ahead and log in, um, give it my username and password. No, actually I'm not, because it already knows who I am, because I carry my identity around with me instead of handing it over to some company uh, for them to lose or, cell, uh, so no, no usernames, no passwords. Um, and it actually loaded pretty fast. It's, if I search for Dominic here, because you can see I'm not yet connected to him, um, the result I get back is almost instant. So this is actually sending a request to the internet computer and responding. We were clocking it early at around 18 milliseconds, which is very close to 60 frames per second, which is uh, just absolutely insane. It's um, this is blockchain moving at the speed of, of user impatience, right? You can, you can build an app completely running on the internet computer with no sort of other proxies. Um, yeah, just look at, yeah, look how fast that loads. Um, and also this entire app is running from the canister itself, right? So the, the, you saw maybe in the, in the build step, it was taking my front-end assets, it was adding it to the canister as I deployed it. There's not a multi-tiered decentralized solution where actually your front-end is still running on an Amazon server somewhere. So it's all, um, it's all coming from the canister, it's all coming from the internet computer. So yeah, uh, let's see, where's our, where's our checklist? Databases, REST APIs, load balancers, firewalls, CDNs, browser extensions. Oh, I didn't, yeah, did you see any browser extensions? I didn't need you know, and anything special. It's just, to an end user, that app was exactly like any other web app. Usernames, passwords, web servers, it's all gone. So yeah, um, kind of replacing the legacy IT stack, right? These are things that I, as a developer, don't especially want to deal with, and now I don't have to. Um, it's, kind, it's a paradigm shift. Really, and if you're, if you're playing buzzword bingo, you get to check off paradigm shift now, so I said it. Um, but let's look at an, another paradigm shift in, from history. So when we believed that the 
Earth was the center of the universe, we had, we had to add all this extra stuff. Uh, we call them epicycles and deference in order to explain why planets and stars weren't where the model said they should be. We had to add all these extra things. Um, and what we ended up with was this very complicated solution in order to save the underlying model. And then Copernicus comes along and says, well, wait a second, what if we put the sun in the center and all the complexity just sort of melts away? There were skeptics, of course, which is why I imagine that some people in this room, myself included, were like, really? Really? So these things take time. And we've seen it before, though, in software. Software is almost a series of paradigm shifts, right? So like, obviously, we don't use punch cards anymore. Uh, when I was learning to code, I had to manually add line numbers, right? Anybody else remember those days? Manually, yeah, they were, it was terrible. And so now my daughter, she's eight, she's in elementary school, she's learning to code. And her, actually her whole generation is, right? There is a tidal wave of developers coming this way and telling them that they need to learn databases and firewalls and usernames and passwords and all that kind of stuff. Is gonna, it's gonna seem like telling them that they need to use punch cards, right? Or that the sun goes around the earth. Thank you. Thanks, Stanley. That was a truly amazing demonstration. So, um, you know, you guys, you just saw the first public demonstration of a proto prototype internet service running on the internet computer. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to stay and network. We've got people here who can answer your questions. And thank you again for coming. Thank you.